Hi, welcome to Best Stories. This is Season 2 in the Adventures of Packy the Rat, a children's podcast. Episode 18, Too Many Rules. Not again, one of the children shouted. What's wrong? Their mom asked. We always have to play the same game, and we never get to play the game that I want to play, said another child. That's not true, said another child. Well, it seemed that none of the children could agree on the same game to play today, and the only way they resolved it was by each child finding their own thing to do. Someone to read some books, someone to draw, and someone outside to play. And then when it was time for dinner, no one could agree on the same dinner. Some wanted pizza, some wanted chicken, and some wanted mac and cheese. No one could even agree on the same dessert. Each child complained. They always had to have what the other one always wanted. Well, in a big family, there are bound to be days that go that way. But luckily, the days would always end the same. It didn't matter that they had had differences or any arguments that went on that day. When their day was ending, there was one thing the children finally could agree on. And it was after they were all ready for bed. They all wanted their mom to tell them a story. And she did. And without any arguments, the children were ready, and they couldn't wait until they heard their mom say, Heads down, covers up, and lights out. And for the first time that day, their mom thought she could even see a smile on her children's faces as she said, It's time for our next story about the adventures of Packy the Rat. Priscilla came stomping into the barn. Where is he? Oh my, who said Clara? Packy, said Priscilla. I'm right here, what's up, said Packy. Did you take the string out of my garden that I had tied onto my tomato plants? Oh, you mean you meant to tie the string on them? I thought that string just got caught around them, said Packy. No, Packy, it was helping hold the plant up so the tomatoes didn't touch the ground. That can cause a tomato to rot. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, but the tomato plants looked great to me. I didn't see any rotten ones. Priscilla said, Well, remember, Packy, just ask me before you take something. Okay, I will, said Packy. Priscilla climbed up to her loft to get some more string to fix her garden. And when she got up there, There were muddy footprints all over everything. On her bed, the floor, mud was everywhere. Priscilla yelled, Packy! Oh boy, what now, thought Packy. Packy, there is mud everywhere up here, said Priscilla. Oh yeah, sorry. Little Jeffrey and I were playing a game this morning after we went to the pond, Packy explained. Well, why didn't you clean the mess up, said Priscilla. Oh, I forgot. I'll do it later, said Packy. Priscilla was not happy. Well, she decided to go get something to eat. Then she saw that someone had eaten all the vegetables from the vegetable bin and it was empty. Priscilla huffed. Who ate the last vegetables from the bin and didn't refill the vegetable bin? Oh, that was me, Packy said shyly. Buddy and I were having a snack, said Packy. We thought we would refill it when Buddy got back from his walk. Packy, said Priscilla, you don't follow any rules. You have too many rules, said Packy. And then they both stormed out of the barn. Oh my, said Clara. Yes, good heavens, said Ginger, what should we do? But now Packy and Priscilla were not the only ones not getting along today in the barn. It seems that Henry was not happy with Oliver. You see, sometimes when Oliver is eating, his food slops over his pen and lands right where Henry is walking. And today, Henry slipped and bumped his head. Poor Henry, he had a bump on his head. He yelled, Oliver, I asked you not to slop your food where I walk. Oh, oh, right, I say, I'm sorry, I forgot, said Oliver. But Henry was still angry, and he didn't want to talk with Oliver anymore today. Oh my, Clara Mood, where is Buddy? We were supposed to go to the pond today. And when Buddy came into the barn, Clara Mood, Oh 
Oh, there you are. Where have you been? I was at the pond. Oh, I'm sorry, said Buddy. I forgot you wanted to go to the pond with me today. Clara didn't say much. She just let out a loud moo. Buddy felt bad. He knew she was not happy. Well, now it seems that the barn friends were not getting along very well today. And at dinner, it only got worse. It all started when the barn friends heard Clara say, Oh my! Then Ginger figured out why Clara had said that, and Ginger said, Good heavens, Clara! We're trying to eat! Then somehow a water bucket tipped, and water fell all over the hay they were eating. And that was enough for the barn friends to start the blame game. And now usually games are fun and helpful, but not this game. The barn friends started blaming one another for everything that had gone wrong today, from the empty vegetable bin to the spilled water. Yikes! It seemed the barn friends were not getting along, and they all went to bed not talking to one another. And when they woke up in the morning, it was more of the same. They were not talking to each other. And what was worse, no one ever picked up the hay that had gotten water spilled on it, and they never filled the vegetable bin. In fact, the barn had never looked so messy. And at breakfast, since no one was talking, no one made any plans to do anything together today. Now I'm not sure how the barn friends are going to fix this one, because each of the barn friends were mad or annoyed or had hurt feelings with one another, and each of them had decided they had somewhere else they had to be. Priscilla went to the meadow where it was quiet and she could look for herbs. Henry went for a walk. Oliver went to find a good mud puddle. Clara left for the grass fields. Little Jeffrey wanted to play with Packy, but Packy had already left and he didn't know where he went. Little Jeffrey looked around. He was sad because there was no one to play with. He decided to take the treasure box outside to look at all the treasures for something to do today. Buddy just wandered out of the barn. He was sad too. In fact, before the morning was over, not one barn friend was left in the barn. No one was in the barn. It was empty. And when the farmhands came into the barn that morning, they looked around. One of the farmhands said, Hey, where are all the animals? And why is it so messy? Ah, uh, the animals are probably just outside enjoying the beautiful day, out for a walk or something, said another farmhand. But wow, did they leave everything messy, said that farmhand. I agree, said the other farmhand. But we have a lot of chores to do today. We're going to have to clean this mess up later. And they left, and the barn was empty and messy. Oh boy, that is not good. A barn left empty and messy makes it look abandoned. Later that day, Buddy had come back to the barn just before dinner, and still no one had returned. So he left the barn again and went to look for the others. Then Packy walked into the barn shortly after that, and he realized no one was in the barn. It was empty, and he didn't know where all the other barn friends were. And by this time, Packy was feeling bad for taking the string out of Priscilla's garden, for not filling the vegetable bin when he knew it was empty. And when he went up to his loft, he saw all the muddy paw prints, and he felt bad that he had left such a mess. And to make matters worse, he noticed he had not fixed the leaky ceiling that dripped over Priscilla's bed. He thought for a moment, I guess I've not been very good at following the rules. So Packy began wiping up all the muddy paw prints that were all over his loft. Then he looked around his loft all cleaned up. It sure was a nice room when it's all cleaned up, he thought. He looked down at the barn. He loved all his barn friends and all the fun times they had had together. But it did look messy down there, and the wet hay was getting smelly. So Packy realized he had to do something to help fix up and clean their barn today. He wanted to show his friends how much he cared. Packy felt bad all his friends were upset with each other. So, Packy found some string and went to string up the tomato plants in Priscilla's garden. Then he picked a whole backpack full of vegetables to fill the vegetable bin. And when Packy went to empty his backpack into the vegetable bin in the barn, he was hoping all his barn friends would be back in the barn by then. However, that was not exactly the case. Since the barn had been left empty, a family of skunks had wandered into the barn. And when this family of skunks wandered into the barn, they didn't find anyone in the barn. They did find that pile of wet hay just scattered all over the middle of the barn. And that family of skunks decided to nestle down into that hay. And so when Packy walked into the barn, sadly he saw that none of his barn friends had come back yet. However, he did hear something. There was someone in the barn, but it was not his barn friends. And when Packy went to put the vegetables in the vegetable bin, he was face to face with that family of skunks that had nestled into that wet hay. He threw the vegetables into the air and shouted, Yikes! 
and that family of skunks was startled too. And now when a skunk gets startled, it is not good. In fact, it's very smelly, and I mean very smelly, real smelly. And that smell went all over Packy and all over the barn. Packy ran out of the barn as fast as he could. Help! 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 He shouted. And now that smell came with him too. But none of his barn friends were around to help him. Oh no, said Packy. A family of skunks has moved into our barn. I have to find all the barn friends and let them know. Luckily, with the way Packy was yelling and smelling, it didn't take long to get the attention of some of the barn friends. Packy found Buddy first. Packy told him about the family of skunks that had moved into the barn. Oh, that's not good, said Buddy, trotting away from Packy. Where are you going, Buddy, said Packy. We have to get them out of there. I agree, said Buddy. But Packy, you stink. Get to the stream over there and rinse off. Okay, said Packy. And Packy ran to the stream and he splashed into the water and splashed all around. Now little Jeffrey had set up his treasure box under a tree by the stream. And when he saw Packy in the water, he flew right over to him until he smelled him. What happened? Little Jeffrey asked as he quickly jumped back out of the water away from Packy. You smell, he honked. Buddy said, Packy got sprayed by a family of skunks. How did that happen, honked little Jeffrey, holding his nose. Packy yelled, There's a family of skunks in the barn. What, said little Jeffrey? I'm going to tell them to get out of our barn and tell them they made my friend all smelly. Packy shouted, No, 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 don't do that. But it was too late. Little Jeffrey flew to the barn and he flew right up to that family of skunks. He also startled the skunks. And little Jeffrey came flying out of the barn as fast as he could. But not before the skunks had sprayed him and poor little Jeffrey smelled just as bad as Packy. Well, now things have gone from bad to worse. Packy splashed and splashed around the stream, but he told Buddy, I don't think this is helping. No, I don't either, said Buddy, trying to keep a good distance from the smelly Packy. Why don't we try the pond, said Buddy. Do you think that will help, said Packy? Well, we have to try something, said Buddy. Then little Jeffrey flew up to them, smelling just as stinky as Packy. Oh, no, not you, too, said Buddy. Little Jeffrey dove into the stream. Pecky said, Yikes, you smell as bad as me. Let's go to the pond. Maybe swimming in the pond will wash away the smell. This water isn't deep enough. So they quickly went to the pond to try to get rid of that horrible skunk smell. And on the way to the pond, they saw Henry coming back from his walk, and Clara was walking back from the field. Buddy, Pecky, and Little Jeffrey were running to the pond, and Henry and Clara followed them to see what was going on. Now Oliver and Lily were already at the pond, and they too were curious to what was happening. And it didn't take them long to guess something was wrong. Oh my, what happened? said Clara, turning her head to avoid the smell. Then Buddy quickly explained to his friends what had happened. Buddy told his friends that a family of skunks were in the barn. Buddy said, the skunks must have thought the barn was abandoned, because it was empty all morning. Now any time anyone goes into the barn, they get sprayed by that family of skunks. Oh, so that is why Packy and little Jeffrey smell. They got sprayed by skunks, said Henry. And Packy and little Jeffrey dove and swam all over the pond, but the smell did not rinse off. And after a while, Packy and little Jeffrey were exhausted from thrashing about to try to wash off the skunk smell, but they still smelled very stinky. Holding his nose, Oliver said, Oh, why, when I roll in the mud, it helps get things off me. Let's try that. Now Ginger had also met everyone at the pond, and she said, Good heavens, said Ginger, get in the mud, little Jeffrey. So Packy and little Jeffrey rolled around and around in the mud, hoping to get the skunk smell off them. And now all the barn friends were at the pond, because Priscilla had just arrived from the meadow. Why are Packy and little Jeffrey rolling in the mud, and what is that smell, said Priscilla. Oh my, they got sprayed by a skunk, said Clara. And, oh, why, right, it was my idea for them to try to roll in the mud to get rid of the smell, said Oliver. Well, I don't think that is working, said Priscilla. I've never smelled anything so stinky. Well, we've already tried having them wash off in the stream and in the pond. Nothing's getting rid of the stinky skunk smell, said Buddy. Now, after they were covered in mud, Packy and little Jeffrey ran to the pond to see if they'd gotten rid of the smell. But, like Priscilla had predicted, they smelled just as bad as ever. Then the barn friends decided they should go to the barn to see if the skunks were still there. Now the barn friends were keeping a good distance from Packy and little Jeffrey, and they were holding their noses to avoid that stinky skunk smell. Priscilla, Henry, and Buddy looked through the window and into the barn. They're still there, they said. 
Then Clara and Oliver looked into the window. Oh, why, they've made a nest right in that pile of wet hay, said Oliver. Oh, my, what are we going to do, said Clara. Oh, good heavens, we have to get them out of our barn, honked Ginger. And we have to get that horrible smell off Pecky and little Jeffrey and our barn, too, Ginger honked. Gobble, 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 said Gobbles. Lily and the Lamb Twins said, We agree. And Packy said, Oh, corn nuggets, it's way too smelly here. Let's go back to the pond. It doesn't smell as bad there. So Packy and little Jeffrey stayed in the water while everyone sat by the pond, wondering what they should do about the skunks living in their barn and how they were going to get that smell of stinky skunk off Packy and little Jeffrey. Oliver said, I'm afraid that family of skunks in the barn doesn't want to leave. Good heavens, said Ginger, I wonder how they got in there. Well, said Buddy, we all left the barn, and they saw it was empty, I guess. Packy and little Jeffrey got out of the water, hoping the smell had finally washed off, but they smelled just as stinky. Priscilla said, Oh, Packy, how did you get sprayed by skunks anyhow? Then Packy explained, I felt bad for the mud up in the loft and the empty vegetable bin and taking the string out of the garden. So I cleaned up the mud in the loft, and I put string around the tomato plants, and I had a whole backpack full of vegetables, and I went to the barn to put them away. And I found the skunks in the barn, and they sprayed me. And oh no, I just remembered, I left the vegetables in the barn, and now they're going to be too smelly to eat, said Packy. Holding her nose, Priscilla gave Packy a very big, quick hug. I'm sorry I got upset with you, she said. I'm glad you're okay. Packy said, I'm sorry for not following the rules. I'll try to do better. But Priscilla, how am I going to get rid of this skunk smell? I've been rinsing off at the pond all day and I still smell horrible. I'm not sure, said Priscilla. Maybe some of the herbs or flowers I found will help get rid of the smell. Priscilla crushed up the flowers and herbs and rubbed it all over Packy and little Jeffrey. Now go rinse off in the pond again, Priscilla said. But they still smelled like stinky skunk and nothing helped get rid of that skunk smell. Then Priscilla said, I wonder. What, said Packy, I'll try anything. Well, remember when we lived in the farmhouse and we left our wet clothes in the laundry bin and the clothes got really smelly? I eventually found some things in the farmhouse to mix together and finally got rid of that stinky smell. Oh yeah, I remember. Do you remember what you used, asked Packy? I think so, said Priscilla. I remember I tried so many different mixtures, though, to get rid of the stinky smell. But finally, uh, I just used some soap and baking soda and vinegar. I remember, and that took away the stinky smell. I wonder if that would get that stinky skunk smell off you. We have to try, said Packy. Oh my, let's try, said Clara. We have to go to the farmhouse to get all those things, though, said Priscilla. But it might work. Good heavens, we have to try, said Ginger. I agree, said Henry. But it's too late to go up to the farmhouse today, said Packy. But tomorrow, somehow, some way, Packy was going to go to the farmhouse and get the items they needed to get rid of that stinky skunk smell that was all over little Jeffrey and himself. The barn friends all settled by the pond to go to sleep because those skunks were still in their barn. They all laid under the stars thinking of a way to get into the farmhouse tomorrow and how they would get back into their barn. We're going to have to wait for the next episode to see how they'll do that, because this is the end of our story today about the adventures of Packy the Rat. Thanks for listening. But wait, before we go, did you know... Skunks will do many things to warn you before it sprays its famous skunk odor. A skunk growls, spits, fluffs its fur, shakes its tail, and will stomp the ground as a warning when it's startled. But when the skunk does use their spray, they can spray up to 10 feet away, and its odor is detected up to one and a half miles away. Wow, that's far. I sure hope the barn friends can help Packy and little Jeffrey and figure out how to get rid of that stinky skunk smell. Do you know of any animal that ever got sprayed by a skunk? Or have you ever been somewhere and have smelled that stinky skunk smell? It is a really stinky smell, isn't it? Well, that's all for today. 
Thanks for listening to Best Stories and listen up for our next adventure to find out what happens next. <laughs>